where there was no influence from the family context. However, uh, the main influence was the Mathematical Olympiad, which is a competition for high school students uh, all over the world and also in Austria. And uh, I, yeah, I was uh, influenced by my school teacher to enter this uh, Mathematical Olympiad and was quite, quite successful. Uh, and there I got interested for, for, for mathematics at the age of, say, 14 or 15. And I was also very much interested in physics. Uh, and it was not clear if I would prefer to study physics or mathematics. Even entering the university, uh, originally I planned to study physics, but uh, there I was strongly influenced by, by lectures of Wolfgang Schmidt, who was at that time a visiting professor in Vienna. He originated from Vienna and was then for all his life career in the US. And from time to time he spent a year uh, to give lectures as a visiting professor in Vienna. And this then took me definitely to mathematics. And so I became a mathematician. We were quite early in the, in more or less in the, uh, in, in the first semester at university. Yeah. I have seen that mathematics is what, real, what I really like. The thinking, the working in a much more precise way compared to physics, uh, not being dependent on experiments. Uh, this was really the point. I am still very interested in theoretical physics, but uh, physics without doing experiments is not really physics. And even I like experiments. I did a lot of experiments as a high school student. Yeah? So uh, my, my physics teacher at school um, allowed me to do experiments in a school laboratory. Uh, but nevertheless, I then preferred the uh, precise theoretical work and being not dependent on uh, on experiments which you have to do several times and uh, yeah so and in, in particular these lectures of of Wolfgang Schmidt uh, told me that mathematics is the, f the subject uh, which fits to me much more Yeah, so the title of the program here is uh, Diophantine Problems, Randomness and Determinism, and this is my research. So it's uh, always connected with arithmetics and randomness. So um, my research uses concepts from arithmetics uh, to describe phenomena which can be considered to be random. And uh, uh, just to, 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 to describe it in an example, uh, one of the topics I, I worked here in, 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 uh, in the time as a Morley chair are quasi Monte Carlo methods. These are Monte Carlo as you know, is a place very close to here. And this is a place for randomness. People use uh, random uh, experiments, uh, playing uh, in the casino, to win or to lose money. And uh, so Monte Carlo methods in mathematics stand for the general uh, idea to use random events uh, to compute quantities. So, for instance, you can, if you like to compute the area of some strange field, 
you can throw points randomly into the area, you can count the points, and of course the number of points is in some sense related to the size of this, or of this area. This is a very simple, uh, of course, uh, problem, uh, but in modern physics, uh, quantities uh, that cannot be computed exactly by exact formula can be computed in this way at least uh, a approximative. And uh, a very quite recent application of these things uh, are quantities in mathematical economy which behave quite similar to physics problems uh, for instance, computing values of financial products like options uh, can be uh, computed approximately with similar Monte Carlo methods. And quasi-Monte Carlo methods are just uh, deterministic ways using concepts from arithmetics to get even better result uh, compared to use random constructions which are truly random. And that's one of the, the subjects I'm interested in. Uh, so to combine pure mathematics, number theory, arithmetics, with problems on the more applied side like uh, mathematical finance or computation of high dimensional integrals or whatever. So this is one field where I'm very interested in. Uh, another focus lies on the arithmetic side. So the, the, the main title is Diophantine problems. So a Diophantine problem is a problem which is solved in integers. So for instance, solving equations like Fermat's last theorem, for instance, uh, the solutions should be integers. And this, of course, as you know from Fermat's last theorem, are very difficult problems. And uh, this is a, a, a vast field of research with very, very distinct methods. Uh, where my focus lies on effective methods. So methods where, which enable us really to compute the solutions. So it's also related with problems of complexity, how fast you can compute uh, uh, the solutions, and so on and so forth. Uh, yes, and the third point uh, of my interests are connecting these two aspects, arithmetics and uh, randomness in the sense of more uh, on the applied side. Uh, these are dynamical systems, arithmetic dynamical systems, understanding the dynamic behavior of transformations uh, and yeah, these three uh, aspects of random structures and arithmetics were in the heart of this Morley chair semester and are also more or less the field where I am interested in in general. Yeah, uh, of course I should say here that it was a strange semester very much affected by COVID-19. So I had to uh, switch uh, my first uh, planned event. This was the research school on quasi Monte Carlo methods and applications within, say, three days from a hybrid event to a purely online event because of lockdown. And originally, of course, it was planned as a, as a standard research school with students and visitors and so on and so forth. So I had to switch it twice from on-site to hybrid, which was in 
in, in a well-ordered manner because I was prepared to do that. But the switch from on-site to virtual was really within three days. And uh, so I was very happy that even for that uh, event, it was possible to have a lot of discussions with uh, Madame Mom de Champ from, from Lyon, virtual only, of course, and with Hans-Jörg Albrecher from, from Lausanne. So we could even start um, a joint research project, but originally it was planned to have all these people here, and uh, this was a pity, really. But I learned how to use uh, electronic means for even for doing close, tight discussions. Yes. Yeah? So, uh, of course, I, I have no need to use it to give lectures. We do the same for students. But really, to do discussions with a lot of people, uh, this was new for me, and it definitely worked. And so I. I thank in particular to Guillaume, who <laughs> disappeared just now. Well, this was very helpful to have him in the background for, the, this, this, uh, for these online interactive sessions. Yeah, so this, uh, this was the research school. Uh, of course, then I, I became more clever. <laughs> and Celine told me that it's better for the big conference to make it, uh, to, to do it immediately. Uh, virtual, yes, because um, for so many people, and one should say there were more than 130 participants at the conference, so uh, a hybrid event would be really difficult, and of then it turned out it would be also impossible because of COVID-19, and so we made it purely um, an online event uh, with discussion sessions. And uh, I think it, 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 it ran very well. I, am not, I cannot say that I'm happy because uh, it was very much affected by these pandemic problems. Uh, nevertheless, we had uh, to, uh, yeah, for instance, with, with uh, many lectures which gave new impetus to research, we could uh, for instance, with Vitaly Berlison, I, I have a joint work which now maybe could be extended and thanks to these online conferences. And this is only a one specific example. So there are definitely, uh, it was definitely possible to, to build up new, new lines of research by these online uh, meetings. Nevertheless, it cannot replace uh, a usual conference. Yes, that's, that's clear, yes. Yeah, and the, I should say the third event was the workshop on discrepancy theory. And there, uh, I, I was, in the end, I was happy because we split it into two, uh, into two events. One was in December, November, December, just online with recorded lectures. But now in February, we could have some on-site meetings, discussing with Joel Riva, discussing with Manfred Madrich from, from uh, Nancy, with the, the people here from the campus. So we had a really physically <laughs> interaction at a modest level. And, uh, but it was the best what we could do. Yeah. What was mostly affected was the research in pairs program or in groups, because there were only very few real visitors here. And uh, this was really a problem. And my hope is that maybe in the near or not so near future, it is possible to apply for a research in pairs following up program, just research in pairs when it's really possible to meet the people physically here to work out the ideas we could formulate in these online events. But it, there was no possibility to do real uh, uh, 
work together standing in front of a blackboard or a whiteboard and discussing. Of course, there is software to do that, but it is, does not replace uh, personal exchange. This is one of the plans after the chair. Uh, of course, there are other plans to work out at home the ideas uh, which grew up in the, in the discussion sessions here and to, to exchange via email or electronic means with the friends and colleagues I have met in our virtual discussion room. Uh, on the other hand, I, I have a joint research project ANR and FWF, the Austrian Science Fund, with French colleagues. So on the Austrian side, uh, Christian Elsholz, a, a friend of mine in, in, in Graz, is the formal speaker. And here uh, in France, it's uh, Thomas Stoll from, from Nancy. And the title of this is Arithmetic Randomness. So it exactly fits in the topic I tried to describe some minutes ago here and which was in the, in the heart of the Morlet chair semester and this is a three years or four years uh, joint project between Austrian and, 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 and French research groups and here I will also of course uh, bring in my, my, my personal expertise together with all the other uh, collaborators and that's the a second point I will do after the Morlet chair. Um, and I also have with Hungarian friends uh, a funded research project on Diophantine equations. So on the Diophantine uh, number theoretic part of the Morley semester there is also the possibility of an international cooperation more with Hungarian colleagues but uh, Many of them were speakers in, in our conference here, in the virtual <laughs> conference. And so also the spirit of this conference will survive for a longer time. Yeah, good, good. Thanks for rem, uh, rem, uh, reminding me. Uh, it is planned to publish uh, such a Mollet chair volume. This is all under preparation. And I hope that it could be finished at least before my 65th birthday. <laughs>